episode of the Havlin A Coaches Show, our first episode of the Coaches Show in 2022. And our first guest in 2022 was our head women's basketball coach, Michael Madrid. Hello again, coach. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having us. I appreciate you making some time out after uh, an excellent end of 2021 for you guys. And then just as good of a beginning to 2022, a weekend where you guys earned two conference wins. This is back-to-back -back season. You guys started 2-0 in conference. The first time that's happened in this program in about 20 years. How, when you look at this, the weekend as a whole, both Friday and Sunday, what's your assessment of how your team played? You know, growth, um, you know, just from where we started, you know, as a program, obviously getting hired um, and getting to this point, and then, uh, you know, just our players and just really excited for them. Uh, I don't think people understand how much hard work they put in, the extra time that they put in, and just seeing our program grow, watching our players continue to get better, um, having success on the floor, and, you know, just an exciting time for Havilene Athletics as a whole. I wanted to start with the game on Friday. So you guys had a team coming in. We all know how good they were. They'd won, I think, 42 of their last 43. They were, they were defending national champions. They'd won seven in a row, and yet you guys beat them at home by 17 in a game where you never, your team never trailed. How did you guys accomplish something like that? You know, it just starts in practice, obviously, with preparation. Um, you know, our players, as I mentioned to you before, they were just really locked in um, mentally, really, really focused. We talk about playing one possession at a time, uh, you know, not letting our highs be too high, not, or not letting our lows be too low. But I thought we executed at a really high level offensively uh, at times. You know, obviously, when you knock down shots, things are good. But really defensively, we were, we were pretty solid. I thought we forced them into some late shot clock situations um, and just you know, played as a whole pretty well. I should also mention that was their lowest point total in 12 years in that game. You guys held them to 42 points. When you have teams that, are, that have been as good for as long as Lubbock has, a lot of times you hear players on those teams talk about how sometimes they have teams beat before they even take the court. Did you feel like there was any need to avoid your team being intimidated by the Lubbock Christian, by, you know, by the things they've accomplished, by the players they have, like an All-American like Ali Schulte? Was there any need to try and avoid Try to avoid any sort of intimidation or trepidation in that going into that game? Well, interesting point, just to follow up with your question. I was actually on the bench at LCU when they scored that lowest point total, okay. uh, which is kind of an interesting dynamic. But, you know, um, our players know, you know how good they are. They know how good their players are. They know the history of their program. Um, but, you know, one thing about our players that they don't know is only Annie and Megan were, it, were a part of this program when we went to LCU two years ago and lost by 42 points. You know, the remaining players, they're new. You know, as far as they know, you know, they, ha they respect LCU tremendously just like everybody else does, but they were just a team on our schedule that, that we were going to play. And so, um, you know, just excited for them. They were, they were super excited. We just watched film and, and watched a bunch of clips and just to kind of watch some things that we did good was awesome. But, you know, we've, we've got to move on to the next challenge and, uh, you know, Excited about the growth from that game, but looking forward to our next team. And your team did that pretty well moving on to the game on Sunday. You guys never trailed again against Eastern, won that game by 12 points at home. What were, I know we just talked about that the other day, but what did you feel like allowed your team to, to put together another good day on the court? You know, defensively, again, being locked in, forcing players to take shots that, that don't normally take shots. I wish we would have blocked out a little bit better, but you know those things are going to happen at times. But I thought offensively we were really balanced. Four players in double figures. That's what we talk about all the time. Is you never know when it's your time. You never know when it's your time to step up. Everybody's got to be ready. And so offensively we were really, really balanced. We shared the ball, scored inside, scored outside, and so it was just a it was just a good team victory overall against Eastern. Obviously you had no Mia Cherry on the court this weekend. Then you lose Jay Schroeder for the game on Sunday. And yet, you still, yet, yet that didn't seem to bother anybody. You had players like Chrislyn Jones step up. Chrislyn had a big day on Sunday. How happy were you to see your team sort of unburdened by the fact that a couple of players were on the bench? And when I talked to Chrislyn, she talked about how she felt like she needed to, to step up and have a big game. She did that. Were you happy with the, your team's ability to kind of put, put those kind of things behind them and be ready for the opportunity that they were presented with. Absolutely, you know, we talk about it all the time in practice, you know, next, next person up, next man up, I guess, if you will. And so we, we had a few players that were out, um, you know, in pregame uh, yesterday, we talked about someone's gonna step up, now it's your turn, now it's your turn. And so just be ready when it's your turn because you never know when it's your opportunity. And so, you know, the players that played took obviously uh, 
took advantage of the opportunity that was handed to them and just excited to see them have success. They, they put in so much work, it's just fun to see them have success. I a quick turn on you guys will be at home on Wednesday to play AM International uh, at 2 p.m. and things don't get any easier. International is another excellent team. How do you put this? What's the what are the goals for you guys in the preparation over the next two days two days to get ready for Wednesday? You know they're they're really well coached team, really balanced. They have a really good inside player. Uh, they cause people a lot of problems and they score a lot of points. So our hands um, will definitely be full. But you know again it just goes back to what we preach all the time. You know take one day at a time. Tomorrow we'll focus on what we need to do offensively, defensively, scheme wise against international. Um, you know, we'll work on going 1-0 tomorrow and watch some scout and get prepared and then look forward to uh, playing on Wednesday. I know you and I have talked about this before, but how much has your team's ability to embrace that mindset of, you know, one day at a time, worry about today, let tomorrow take care of itself. How much has embracing that mindset helped you guys have success so far this season? It's interesting you brought, brought up the word embrace because we talked about, you know, especially after beating LCU, um, you know, we told them you're, you're no longer a secret. You know, you're no longer going to surprise people. Um, so you have to embrace that. You've got to come every day with, with a mindset of you know walking in with a lunch pail, I guess if you will, and, and going to work. And so you know we had a really good practice this morning. They were really focused, uh, went pretty light, letting them rest a little bit, and then tomorrow we'll amp it up and get ready to go again. Yeah, you talked. You and I talked after they went over Angelo State. You said for a while you felt like this program was just a, a check mark on people's schedule. When you beat the number one team in the nation, that check mark kind of goes away. But I know you guys will be ready for the challenge on Wednesday. Thank you so much for the time. We'll see you at 2 p.m. on Wednesday for the game against International Coach. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you. We'll take our first break here on the Havlina Coaches Show. When we return, Havlina Men's Basketball Coach Johnny Estelle will sit down for a chat about what's up next for Havlina Men's Basketball. We'll take a break and come back. This is the Havlina Coaches Show. Jones, who had 10 points, finds Williams wide open for the first bucket of the day. Pulling the left, I should say now, who started every game for Timo this year. Rivers crosses in a three. Rivers to Williams up top. Williams spots up for a triple and an answer. So far, not terribly long range shooters. You know, it's a pain, it's a different story. And she's got that to make it 13 to 9. Right side, Dominguez, up top, Payne left wide open again. She's got it. Kenya working against McCurdy, inside for a shot that goes through. Luke trying to get back to an 11 point lead. Jones trying to make it a 12 point lead, she does. Five points for Christian Jones. Dominguez needs some help, finds Mickens with five to shoot. Mickens driving inside through two players for a bucket and a foul. By a Joby away. Mickens. Oh, here he waiting for it inside. Tamuk didn't see her. Instead, Jones will just toss in a triple. Eight points for Chrislin Jones. Pena out of the corner. Up top. Jones for a triple. She's got it. And Chrislin Jones is feeling it today. 11 points for her. Points. You can't afford to blow those chances. Inside Williams for two. And Devin Williams with nine points. Threes. Rivers. Dominguez with a straight on triple, good. And Havelina desperately needed that. But Payne with a room service rebound. Jones will try her luck. She's got it. And Chrislin Jones with a season high 14 points. The most leading scorer has been held mostly in check today, but has kept her team from taking a lead. But Pena changes that right there for Williams. Pena who cuts inside and scores. Have done a good job finding those cutters. Avalinas will dribble it out for their sixth consecutive home win. As they earn a 63-51 victory over the Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. Rivers against Schulte. I mean, for her here with two players on her, gets them both in the air and puts it in. Pena. Lady scorer drives inside for a layup off the glass. Well done by Brianna Pena. Trying to drive past Foster to the hoop. She puts it in and a foul. And Anastasia Mickens. It's airtight on this possession so far. Schritter has to get up to throw up a prayer here. She will. And she hit it. Goes right past her inside for a layup that's just short. Williams gets the rebound. Goes back up and puts it in. 
it. Guarded by Robertson. Finds Schritter wide open for three. And Jade Schritter is up to a game high eight points. Pena going to drive on Robertson. Out to Payne for a contested three. That's good. And Janessa Payne gives the Havelinas a 10 point lead. Lake had it knocked away. Got it back. Schritter left open. Takes advantage. Two of six in the field in this quarter. Jones for a three, that's good. Chrislyn Jones gets on the score sheet with a triple. Jumper over Foster, that's good. And the Habs have their largest lead of the game. Narrowly avoided a travel there. We got the pass off. Jones for three, that's good. Running out of room, running out of time. Tosses it to Jones. Jones for a jumper, that's good. Eight for Chrislyn Jones. Williams, River to Jones, excuse me. Jones goes, in, goes inside, pulls up for a jumper, that's good. Chrislyn Jones has 10 points. Rivers all of a sudden was left wide open out of the corner, Schritter for three. 14 for Jade Schritter. Inside Mickens, wide open underneath for two points. So Tanook that time broke the press to perfection. And with no foul coming, the Havelina fans in attendance can rise to their feet for their team who put on an incredible performance at home today. As Rivers dribbles it out, the celebration in Kingsville can begin. Number one goes down in Kingsville today. Another episode of the Havlina Coaches Show, and we're joined by our next guest, and that's our head men's basketball coach, John Yestel. Coach Estel, appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you. Now, I know this is uh, it was coming off of a, a, dis a difficult weekend for your team. I, we had two games I, that I'm sure your team was looking forward to, all of us were looking forward to. How do you? How did you as a coach try and try and handle a situation like the one you guys had this past weekend? Uh, well, I mean, like we handle every issue, you know, we handle it from a, a standpoint of uh, this is what God has put in our life at this point in time and we're going to deal with it constructively, we're going to deal with it together. And, uh, you know, I think this group of young men, which I've been saying for, I mean, so all year long, uh, are very tight-knit, uh, they have a really good, strong culture in that locker room. Um, and this is just a situation we're going through, and we're not independently going through it. Those who have tested positive, even though they're not with us in isolation, that we stay connected. We know they're part of our family, and that's what I think when you set your culture as a coach, you set it for the unexpected things that may happen. You know, yeah, you put your team together for championships, but you got to have the right kind of character from the right kind of families and foundations that who, you know, when they go through a tough time, because basketball is such a long season, we don't, you know, fragment. We just get stronger, and that's what I think this group has done. This is a, a tough, I feel like this is a tough situation for, for any coach to deal with because on one hand you have a team that's obviously disappointed. The two games they're looking forward to ended up getting postponed. But I'm sure for you as a head coach, your main concern is for the, the health and well-being of your student athletes. You want to do everything you can to make sure that they are, they're healthy and they're safe and they're in the best position to, to remain that way. And then at the same time, you have, a, um, you have a team that, even though they didn't play this weekend, they're going to be back on the court at some point in time soon. And you want to make sure the team is engaged and prepared and ready for the opportunity when it comes again to play. To, to get back on the basketball court, how do you try and balance all those things as a head coach? Uh, like I said, you, you don't do it by yourself. You know, it takes everybody. And, you know, it, it, it is a unique time. It's, but it's, we're not the only ones going through this. I mean, there's teams at the highest level, Duke, Gonzaga. There's, I think the other night there was 34 or 5 cancellations or, you know, postponements. So, you know, this is not an isolated situation. You have to do what's best for the student athletes, you know, their experience, you know, their health. Uh, basketball is important. It's the reason why we're all together, but it's not the only thing in our, in our lives. So the balance 
aspect that we have, which is a part of our culture and sacrifice. It just comes to fruition right now in a very stressful time. We just we just deal with what's in front of us, and we we, we stay prayed up, we stay uh, together, united, no matter what happens, and we just kind of reinvent ourselves with the guys that we have available. On the court right now, you guys are rating two through ten games. Conference schedule just about to start. How would you? How do you assess where this team is? How well they've played? You know what's. How do you assess this season so far through 10 games? Oh, I thought before the break we were playing really good. I mean, I thought we had two really good road wins against uh, really two good programs, well-coached guys. You know, St. Edwards, you know, it's hard to beat them anywhere, especially there. Um, and then, you know, St. Mary's. Who's, <laughs> St. Mary's is a very talented team. They just, they've just been very close on wins. So it's not because, you know, they're not a very good team. They just have some tough breaks. Uh, but, you know, going into the break, I felt really good. Now, we've been derailed since I came back, you know, you know, rather if it's, you know, with the COVID situation. But we, we've got to go through another period of transformation. We were going to have to do that anyway. You know, I, I told the team, you go through different transformations throughout the year. This one is going to be a little more challenging because we have had so many guys out. So we have to kind of fine tune and reinvent ourselves in different ways, uh, which probably is going to throw us behind schedule a little bit. But our goal still remains the same, is to be champions. So what's step one in taking on or going through that transformation for your well, team? Well, first of all, who do you have available? Uh, you know, that, that, that – from a game planning standpoint, rather offensively, defensively, whatever it is, your opponent, you have to know who you have available. And then once that you pass that point, then you can just kind of start planning ahead. And uh, right now, you know, we, we have a good select group of guys that I think could uh, represent us, if, you know, at the right, you know, in the right way until reinforcements come. When you look at this, where this program is, this is the fourth time in five years you guys have started eight and two, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. to win eight or ten games at any point in time in the season, beginning or end of the year. Mm -hmm. What do you think it says about the, the program and the culture and about the student athletes you've had come through here that you guys have been able to have that success consistently? Uh, you know, I, I think you have to recruit winners, and I think guys that have exhibited winning. You know, you know that's one of the things I. Talk, went through the team and I just pointed out every one of those guys who have won at a high level and there wasn't one guy that had been in the playoffs, won a state championship, been in uh, the national tournament in college and some of them multiple. So I, I use that as a reference point to say they brought that with them. They brought that from home. Uh, you hear me say that consistently. The, the parents and the homes and the people is so important today, the family nucleus, because that's what we do as, as coaches. Our team is a family. It's not just a, a group of individuals that represent the university. We are a family. So when you bring those people together and they bring, you know, with them their winning ways, they impact not only our program, but the Havelina brand, the culture. They, they, they exhibit winning traits in the classroom, off the court, uh, on the court, uh, because that's all they know. They don't know anything. They can be recalibrated. That You can remind, they, you know, just like anybody else, everybody needs some type of reminder. But you're not having to keep doing it over and over again because they have a high standard for their life. They have a high standard for everything in their life. So basketball is important to them, yeah, but Everything they do is important to them, and that what that's what makes my job easier uh, in terms of the head coach of trying to recalibrate in tough situations. All right, well, coach, thank you so much for making some time. We'll be excited to see you guys back on the court whenever that may be, and I know that you, you and your team will be ready. Thank you for taking some time out today. We'll, well see you again. Morgan, I appreciate this opportunity, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank everybody in Havilene Nation that has reached out to our staff and our players. Um, you know, these guys, I share all your, you know, sentiments with them. Uh, you know, they feel like you guys are behind them. And, um, you know, it's sad to really say some of them feel like they let us down, which I try to re remind them they did not let us down. This is just something that is out of their control. So, but when we have the Havilene Nation come through and support us, and rather if it's a call or a text or just with your actions, man, it really means a lot to us. And I just want to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, people say there's no place like having a nation, and it's not just a cliche, it's, it's a reality. Something people as lucky as us get to experience on a daily basis. I agree. We'll take a break and come right back. You are watching the Havelina Coaches Show. Don't go away.